I was born in Durango, Colorado on April 24th, 1925. That puts me 93 years old. Uh, I was 16 when Pearl Harbor was bombed and couldn't wait to get in the service. 15 months after the day I enlisted, I was flying on a B-17 over Germany. And it was the first day that I got there. And they came in and said, we need a tail gunner. And I said, well, I'm checked out in tail. I'll take it. And when I got to the airplane, they were sitting at the end of the runway, idling engine waiting for me to get aboard. I didn't know where I was going. I knew no, no one on the crew, had no idea what I was getting into. On the bomb run, they looked up and said, bandits at 12 o'clock. We had four ME-109s coming in at 12 o'clock. And uh, I heard guns rattling all over the airplane. I could see lights blinking by me all the way around and had no idea what they were. And the engineer called back and said, watch him tail, here they are. And I looked out and from here to the wall was a ME-109 right under our wing. And the first thing I saw was that big black swastika about that big around on the tail. And a chill went through me from my heels clear to the roots of my hair. And uh, the pilot had a black helmet on with a sheepskin across the brow, white neckerchief. And of course it happened in a fraction of a second, but I can still see that imprint. And uh, I clamped down on those 250 caliber machine guns and I don't remember aiming. I was all shook up. And we turned off the target, got our bombs away and turned off the target. And the uh, navigator called back and he said, well, it looks like we're running out of flak up here. How does it look back there to you, Tail? And I looked down on the ground and there was four battery uh, gun emplacement and they was tracking right up our tail. And there was three bursts of flak right behind us. And I said, one more and we've had it. And I had that had it in my mouth when that shell exploded about six feet under the airplane, throwed me up in the air, pushed my helmet down over my face, uh, pulled my intercom wires away, punctured the oxygen system on the side I was plugged into, and uh, the pilot kept calling back, seeing if I was okay, and uh, I was fumbling around trying to plug into the other side of the airplane so I could breathe, and when I finally come to my senses and plugged in the wires, he had just called the waste gunner and said, check on tail, I heard him yell, I think maybe hit. And the waist gunner looked around the tail wheel and said, no, he's still alive, I can see him kicking around back there. When we finally got home, 11 hour run, uh, we started counting damage on the aircraft. We counted 142 flak holes and nine 20 millimeter cannon shells through the aircraft and not a man scratched. We had the uh, vertical stabilizer above my head was a hole about that big around and I never even heard it. That busy. But after that first shock, my combat mission didn't shake me up as bad.